Is the government prepared to proceed with closing argument? Yes, Your Honor, we are prepared at this time. Please do so, counsel. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we told you in our opening statement, this is a story of vengeance and violence on Valentine's Day. The evidence has shown that this is a story of stalking, of abuse, of obsession, and it ended with the death of a woman. And that woman was Veronica Jacobs. The people have presented indisputable evidence to show that the, that the victim, Veronica Jacobs, was stabbed again and again and again and again for a total of eight times until the very life ran from her and she was left to die behind a quick mark on Valentine's Day night. He grew up in Long Island, New York. In his neighborhood, the only two respectable professions were medical and legal. He chose the latter, hoping to make a difference for those who are wrongly accused. Growing up, uh, you know, two, two respected uh, professions were being a doctor or being a lawyer. And um, I felt as though being a lawyer was more towards what I would want to do in life. So I felt like if I was going to have a career, it would be something I could be happy doing. And I felt like being a lawyer was something that would be rewarding and I could be happy doing it. Now, why, why, what is the ultimate dream job in the legal profession for you? Uh, ultimately, ultimately, I'd like to be able to try cases, but be able to defend indigent people from um, disadvantaged social economic communities. Um, growing up, there was a, a young man who I had the, for the fortune of knowing who um, served 10 years in prison, um, and it was a wrongful uh, accusation. And I'd like to be able to be in a position to help something, prevent something like that from ever happening again. So now, what have you done while in law school to try and gather the, the ability, the skill, to, to be able to try cases and help people when you leave law school? Well, ever since the first time I came for my interview, speaking with Professor Filippetti, um, I saw that there was a child advocacy program, and I knew that if I could be a part of that, that that would really help me attain my goals. So since attending the Massachusetts School of Law, I've done everything possible to be able to participate with the trial advocacy program. How does specifically does the trial advocacy program work? Um, well, with the trial advocacy program, we have a tryout where um, students, preferably second years um, and up who have had evidence, they try out for the um, mock trial team. And there's a mock fact pattern that schools from across the country are able to participate in. And um, the dean of our school selects a, a group of students we come together and we commit ourselves for the next three to four months in achieving the goal of being the best that we can, knowing everything about the case, um, knowing the federal rules of evidence as well as the rules of criminal procedure and applying them appropriately. And it's, it's real life practice and it gives us the confidence that when we go out into the world that we know that we know how to try a case. And I was able to take that confidence with me into the Essex County District Attorney's Office where I interned last year. And now you've had a great deal of success in these uh, trial advocacy competitions since you've uh, been involved. You actually got involved during your first year, right? Yes, in my first year I had the fortune of being on the, um, the uh, Northeast Regional runner-up. Um, and last year, um, Massachusetts School of Law won the Northeast Region, and I had the fortune of being able to go to um, the national competition and finish third in the nation. And that's a testament to the, the great work that's being done here at the Massachusetts School of Law. Do, do those types of uh, mock trials, those types of skills, do they carry over? Did you find that they carried over when you went to the Essex County District Attorney's Office? I mean, does that really sort of help you know that, geez, I really think I've got a, a good shot at achieving my dream? Absolutely. Um, the mock trial program at MSL, I think, is unique because it allows us to know that we're as good as anyone in the country. We go out, we compete against those who are regarded as the best, and we always come out on top. So when I went to um, the district attorney's office, I was there for about five minutes. And of course, it's intimidating your first time being in the professional setting. But after about five minutes of seeing that it's really all the same thing, the law is the law. And I know how to apply it. And I've been trained for two years in how to apply the law. I, was, I felt confident that I was as good, if not better, than anyone who was there. Now, you know, anyone pursuing a dream, there's always setbacks along the way. And you're, you're actually not the, the typical age of the entering law student. You're, close to the end of your 20s at this point. Correct. How, how do you 
push through the, the setbacks and the, you know, the times where you say, well, geez, maybe I'm just not going to be able to, to, to do what I, what I really hope in my heart I'd like to do and now that you're so close to it. How do you get past some of those setbacks that occur to anyone along the, the journey to a dream? Well, it's definitely difficult. Um, and I had to realize that it was self-imposed, um, my barriers to achieving my dreams. Um, I had every opportunity to go to college. Um, I had opportunities to go financially. I also had opportunities to go athletically. And I didn't take advantage of all my opportunities in college. I went to college and it wasn't as challenging as it could have been. And as a result of that, I wasn't as successful um, in my goals of attending law school, but I never gave up. Um, I decided to go back to college. Uh, I went and got a master's degree and I worked as hard as I could. And the adversity and the perseverance made me stronger. So I realized that if I ever got the chance to pursue my dream or my goal of being, of being a law student, that I wouldn't let anything stop me. So what drives you today to, to try and achieve that goal? Um, the determination to be successful. Um, I want to be able to take care of my family, be able to support my family, and be able to be a member of my community who everybody else can look up to. And when I say that, there aren't too many young African American members of the community where I'm from who have graduated, gone to college, um, graduated from college and pursuing a professional degree. In fact, of all the friends that I grew up with, particularly males, I think I may be one of only two or three who have actually finished college and are working. So I want to make sure that I let everybody else from where I'm from know that you can do it. And that didn't really become a reality for me until after I finished college and went home for a little while and saw what everyone else was doing. And I want everybody to know that you can go to school and if there's a roadblock, if there's a barrier to your success, push through it. You can still achieve your goals. And what do you think are the most important lessons you've learned along your journey is to, to try and achieve that dream of, of being a lawyer? Never give up. Um, <clears throat> I mean, some people feel that the goals that I have for myself or have set for myself are unrealistic. However, I would say that it's more unrealistic for me to be sitting here right now at the Massachusetts School of Law as a third year law student about to graduate with a job in hand already. I mean, I'm already defying the odds and if I can do it once, I can do it again. So I, I have absolutely no doubt as to my abilities, but my abilities have come through my adversity and through others telling me that I could not do it. Who dreams with you? Your parents, your friends, your the kids on the corner that that you no longer hang around with. I mean, who who else dreams these big dreams with you? Um, definitely my parents. Um, my father has been an incredibly big supporter. My mother and father have, um, and I would say that my mom. She worked 39 years in New York City public schools, and she didn't retire until three years ago um, from working. She's always worked hard to provide a stable home for us and to let us know that we have every opportunity that she may not have had or or that she wanted for us, and I acknowledge that. And I would say that my father, through my bond with him when I was playing basketball um, when I was younger, um, he's always supported me. In fact, he's got a joke that whenever I graduate from school, he's taking my degree. So there are degrees that I have that I've never even seen. Um, i say perhaps he's been my biggest supporter, and um, I love both my parents for that, but um, definitely my, my parents, my father. What advice would you give to others that uh, might see that they're a little further away from from realizing their dream. What advice would you give them as to how what they should do in order to achieve their dreams? Simplest way I would say it is you have to make lemonade out of lemons and that scared money doesn't make money and when I say that if you're not willing to take the chance and invest in your own future then why should somebody else? So if you're going to let somebody telling you that you're not good enough, you're not qualified, there's someone better than you, or what you're reaching for is impossible, if you let that stop you, then why should somebody else believe in you? But if you believe in yourself, then no one can ever stop you. I'm clearly not the smartest person I've ever met. I may not be the brightest, I may not be the most handsome, but I will not give up. I will not give up on my goals. And, and I'm happy that I had to learn that lesson through life, but it's lessons that I now can pass on. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. 
to view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. I felt like if I was going to have a career, it would be something I could be happy doing. And I felt like being a lawyer was something that would be rewarding and I could be happy doing it. Now, why, why, what is the ultimate dream job in the legal profession for you? Uh, ultimately, ultimately, I'd like to be able to try cases, but be able to... Was stabbed again and again and again and again for a total of eight times until the very life ran from her and she was left to die behind a quick mark on Valentine's Day night. He grew up in Long Island, New York. In Is the government prepared to proceed with closing argument? Yes, Your Honor, we are prepared at this time. Please do so, Counsel. <clears throat> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we told you in our opening statement, this is a story of vengeance and violence on Valentine's Day. The evidence has shown that this his neighborhood, the only two respectable professions were medical and legal. He chose the latter, hoping to make a difference for those who are wrongly accused. Growing up, uh, you know, two, two respected uh, professions were being a doctor or being a lawyer. And um, I felt as though being a lawyer was more towards what I would want to do in life. So This is a story of stalking, of abuse, of obsession. And it ended with the death of a woman. And that woman was Veronica Jacobs. The people have presented indisputable evidence to show that the, that the victim, Veronica Jacobs, 